Hello everybody, welcome back to another Gorgeous Maths video. In this video, um, we're going to be proving the analytic, con the Riemann's functional equation for the zeta function. Um, I will prove the one for the uh, he function because that's definitely not obvious and takes quite a while to prove. Um, but for now, um, I'll just do this one. Um, okay. So we are given that um, c of z is equal to one half z times z minus one uh, zeta of z gamma of z over two pi to the negative z over two. Okay. This looks quite complicated and maybe a little bit artificial, but it has a very, very nice functional equation. Um, C of Z is equal to C of one minus Z. One minus Z, okay? So this means that, um, well, if you plug in 1 minus z into all of these z's, you're just going to get the same thing. So we get 1 half z times z minus 1, zeta of z, gamma of z over 2, pi to the negative z over 2, equals 1 half z times z minus 1, zeta of 1 minus z, gamma of 1 half minus z over 2, uh, uh, pi to the, um, well, if we plug in 1 minus z, we'll get z minus 1, okay. Uh, so z over 2 minus a half. Um, yeah, okay. And now, this fact here, means that when we rearrange, we get that zeta of z is equal to, um, uh, um, one half z times z minus one, zeta of one minus z, gamma of one half minus z over two, pi to the z over two minus one half, all over, 1 half z times z minus 1 z, sorry, gamma of z over 2, pi to the negative z over 2, like this. And now, we see that when z equals 1, this denominator actually goes to 0. So this functional equation just, well, zeta of z just has a pole at z equals 1. But actually, when z equals 0, well, actually, gamma has a pole at 0. So actually doesn't actually matter when z equals zero, but it'll cancel. So that's fine. It just doesn't hold for z equal to one. But other than that, we can just cancel this. Okay? So now we're left with this. Zeta of z equals um, gamma of one half minus z over two. Uh, zeta of one minus z pi to the z over 2 minus a half all over gamma of z over 2 pi to the negative z over 2. Okay, and um, as you can just multiply the top and bottom by pi to the z over 2. So if we add z over 2 to this exponent, we we'll just get z minus a half, okay? Okay, and this looks like we're done, right? We kind of have this slightly ugly, nasty to work with maybe functional equation here, but you know, it works, right? Okay. Oh, actually no, we can make it nicer, and this is not the one which I'm attempting to prove, because that's some very simple algebra, which anyone can do, really. Actually, we're gonna make this a lot nicer and get rid of the fraction completely. I'm using a couple of things, one of which I haven't stated before on this channel, or, well, hence I haven't proven it. 
Maybe I will at some point, because why not? I don't think it will fit into the series anymore. Uh, but anyway, the first one we've seen. Gamma of Z, gamma of 1 minus Z is equal to pi over sine of pi Z. Okay, we've seen this one before. And I've got a proof in like number theory 1.1 1 .1 or something like that. One of the really early ones about the gamma function. And this one's quite weird. But, okay, gamma of Z times gamma of Z plus a half is equal to 2 to the Z, 2 to the... 1 minus 2z square root of pi gamma of 2z okay like this and uh well this is like le john legendre's duplication formula or something and i know that flangle maths has a proof of this i have a proof of this so yeah you can find proofs of these in those videos respectively okay so actually using this my idea here was, well, because I, I knew what I was trying to prove, I knew that I wanted a sign out somewhere. And this was the only formula I could think of, which would make this give us a sign out somewhere. So I just multiplied the top and bottom, just not messing around, top and bottom by gamma of 1 minus z over 2. But actually... Gamma of 1 minus z over 2 is nothing but 1 half plus 1 half uh, minus z over 2. And this is exactly that. So, now both of these formulas come into action. This means that zeta of z is equal to this times this is 2 to the okay so we get 2 to the 1 minus well in this case z is precisely this multiplying everything by 2 gets rid of the denominators so we'll get 1 minus z 1 minus 1 minus z minus minus becomes plus the 1 minus 1 will cancel basically overall we get a z of course we have the square root of pi and then we have gamma of basically well 2 times this is just 1 minus z okay now we still have this zeta 1 minus z pi to the z minus half yes I know some of the stuff with the pi's are going to cancel I will do that at the very end, over this, now we use the top formula, Euler's reflection formula. So we get pi over sine of pi z over 2, because in this case our z is just z over 2. Okay, now since we're doing this, over this, this is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so this means that zeta of z is equal to 2 to the z stays, sine of pi, to, pi z over 2, okay, gamma of 1 minus z, okay, Zeta of 1 minus z, this is a very catchy formula, very easy to remember. Um, and now we have a bunch of pi's. Well, square root pi is just pi to the 1 half. Pi to the 1 half times pi to the z minus half is just pi to the z. But then remember we're dividing this by pi, so we just get pi to the z minus 1. Actually this looks like a capital pi, so... And this is our final formula. And, well, actually, this right here is where the... Okay, so this is where the confusion comes from, okay? So we see that if we plug in negative 1, we get the zeta of negative 1. 
Oh my god, I can't. Okay, Zeta. We'll get the Zeta of negative 1 is equal to 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. Sine of pi, well, sine of negative pi over 2 is just going to be negative 1. Okay, so you get negative 1 half times uh, gamma of 1 minus minus 1 is gamma of 2. Gamma of 2 is 1 factorial is just 1. Zeta of 2 is pi squared over 6. Pi to the... And then we get pi to the negative 2. And now this equals, well, the pi's will cancel, so we get negative 1 over 12. But then, doesn't this mean that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n is equal to negative 1, 12? This is very curious, right? This is obviously not right. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus... But remember that our definition for zeta Okay, this uh, we'll only say is true for the real part of z um, bigger than 1, okay? And in this case, of course, the real part of z will just be negative 1, so we don't have this formula here. This is just an analytic continuation, okay? So no 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, etc. does not equal negative 1 to 12. This is just kind of assigning a value to this, I guess. I guess that's how I'll put it, but yeah. Uh, um, although this does make for epic clickbait, you know. Uh, although, yeah. The, this is where the um, negative 1 12 stuff comes from, kind of. So when you analytically continue the zeta function, you get the zeta of negative 1 is negative 1 over 12, then if we recall our original definition, this would mean that this is true. So, yeah, it's a bit weird, so, um, but basically this only works because we analytically continued the zeta function. This does not mean that when someone asks you to do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus da -da -da -da, you should say negative 1 12, basically. Uh, okay, um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video where I'll probably prove the functional equation for the C function, and then I'll probably continue K theory, or maybe I'll do algebra, I'm going to do one last video on group theory, or a Harry Ball theorem proof, or something like that, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, see you in there.